Welcome to Mission Stories for Kids with Uncle Gordon, where you will hear first-hand accounts of answers to prayer and miracles from God. Oh, by the way, I think adults will like this too. Hello, boys and girls. It's lovely to be able to share another little story with you and good to have you with me today. Many times when I was travelling in the Solomon Islands, I had to do so either on canoe, in a canoe, or in a mission boat. When it was further distance, it was often in the mission boat. And the one I travelled in a lot was called the Lower Henny. It had been built in New Guinea and the the meaning of the word was light carrier. It was one that carried the light of God's truth wherever the boat went. And as I'd travel, we'd often have hours just with the crew who, who cared for that boat and who operated the boat, the engineer, Jacob, or it could have been the captain. We'd just talk and they would tell me stories. And one of those days, as we were travelling on the southern coast of Guadalcanal, the southern coast was called the Weather Coast because there was no reef, there were no islands below it, there was no protection from the ocean, there were just big seas rolling in all the time. We were travelling along that coast when Jacob shared the story of, of when they had been visiting there one time before, not too long before in fact. And they were running some meetings in one of the villages. And a lot of the people had gathered together in that village for a number of days. And and then while the folk were out on the boat, they couldn't go and anchor. They couldn't go and tie up to anything. They would just throw an anchor out in the ocean, well away from the waves. And then they'd bring a dinghy in to pick people up to come and sleep in the boat of a night. And this night they were listening to the radio and they heard a report that a cyclone was coming. And they could see by the increased level of wind and by the size of the waves getting bigger and bigger that that it was pretty close. And they were really hoping that the ones who were doing the speaking that night would hurry up and finish their speaking so that they could go in there and pick them up and get out of there. It was the last night and it was the last meeting and of course it seemed to go a bit longer as people wanted to talk with the speakers a little bit longer. And at last the team knew that they were finishing and so they, a couple of them rowed the little, little boat in, the little dinghy that was attached to the boat into the shore and they had to watch the waves very, very carefully. And then they'd ride one wave in and as they got out of the boat, one on either side of the boat, they'd grab the boat and drag it up onto the beach before the next wave came and filled up the boat with water. Going out was even harder. But they managed to get out and they began to chug along the coast towards a sheltered bit of water as fast as they could go. But then as they went, the wind intensity increased and the waves became bigger and bigger. Now the old Lower Henny had a big keel. Most motorboats didn't have a keel, but this one was built so it could sail as well as 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 use the motor. It had twin engines in it. And that old keel, even in in smooth water, would cause the boat to roll. Not a very comfortable boat for travelling in. But on this night, as the waves became bigger and bigger, the boat began to roll more and more, to the point where the mast was actually hitting the waves on one side as it rolled that way, and then it would come back up again, then go across the other way, and the mast would hit on the other side as the wave was going past. They were listening to their radio and they could hear the the communication between all the little vessels and one by one they heard a number of boats that went off the air. And they thought, oh, they've been sunk, they've been sunk. And they could hear the, the commentary from people who were at the main radio trying to communicate with all the vessels, all the boats out on the water. So and so has gone down, they've gone. We heard a last little SOS call, they've gone down. Then all of a sudden their radio went quiet. What's gone wrong? What's gone wrong, they thought. And quickly Jacob ran outside and he looked up and he could see that the aerial that was tied to the mast, because the mast had hit the water a number of times, the aerial had broken. And quickly he climbed up the mast and tried to tie the aerial together and pull it tight. But, but as the mast would swing away and go under the water, he'd go under the water. And then he'd be shaken as he was brought up out of the water and then go to the other side and hit the water on the other side. And he couldn't do it. He tried and tried. Then he got his wind back again. And then he tried a second time and couldn't do it. Third time he'd he'd built up enough courage and said, God, please help me tie this mast, tie this little aerial up to the mast. And he was clinging with his feet and his arms to the mast, hanging onto the mast while he was trying to tie with his free hands and and managed to get it. And then they came on the air again and said, Lower Henny here, Lower Henny here to headquarters, can you hear me? And they heard cheering on the other end. 
They said, oh, we've been praying and praying for you. We thought you had gone down. He said, no, just the mast was, it was hitting the water and the, and the aerial is broken. But then they said, but please keep praying for us because we've got to find a way through the, through the reef just coming up very, very soon. And they then gathered together because they knew they didn't have much time. And with all this wind and rain and it was, and it was so dark outside, they couldn't see the reef properly to know where it was to turn. So they said, God, please guide us. Please help us to get through into safe waters quickly. All of a sudden, it was like searchlights were turned on all across the water and they could clearly see where the waves were smashing against the reef on one side of the passage and on the reef on the other side of the passage. And they turned the boat immediately and went in through the passage into calm waters and then all the lights went out. There were no lights there. There was nobody living there. And they realized that God had lit up the place to bring them home safely. How wonderful that God does intervene for those who want to step out and please Him, to live for Him, to work for Him. God bless you today as you choose to give your life to Him, knowing that He will be there as a part of your life today. See you, boys and girls. Listening to Mission Stories for Kids with Uncle Gordon, a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.